And I'm quite fascinated. How were you able to break into the scene? And maybe if you can share with uh, share with the younger people. The younger people. How do they? Like you mentioned, you were mentored by Matt. You got a break in a. Yeah. I mean, well, what were the... I think it's really interesting because um, I was always curious. Like I, I, I look back at you know. I actually wrote a diary when I was working at Bonavation. And I didn't just look at, you know, if you really want to open your own restaurant and have your own style, you cannot just think that if you copy someone's recipe and you keep enough recipes that you will also be as successful. I think one of the biggest problems is one person works for another person for too long. Whatever they're cooking, like if you work for Joe Robuchon for 10 years, when you come out, you cook like Joe Robuchon. You don't have your own style, right? So I was more interested in when I was looking at him I used to look as a if I was a business owner so I would look at what his customer base um, how does he do his service what is his story how does he do his tasting menu and then how does he cook it and how is he trying to you know what music is he playing and and how is he attracting people to work for him and how is he allowed to uh, he was you know working with Hong Kong tourism board he was you know traveling a lot he ate a lot so I think one of the things is like I think as a young chef especially you need to I know we don't make so much money when you're around but you really you know some people go buy a bag some people do this or that you really need to spend a huge part of your salary which is already hard to eating eating at very good restaurants that have different styles and things like that you cannot when you're working, you're supposed to be working. Your mentor is not supposed to teach you 10 different things every day. You might be in one year only learn 5 to 10. So okay. so what you need to do is you need to eat at other restaurants. You need to go online. You need to research. You need to know what other people are doing. I think what's most important too is that we're not competing in Hong Kong. You're Matt always told me. So Matt and, and, and Alvin are mentors to me as if I didn't work for them for very long. I worked for Matt for three months. I worked for Alvin for a year. What they taught me is how they saw the world and how they saw what food was to them. And you need to know what the philosophy is. Yeah. I used to ask uh, the chef at um, Yardbird all the time. I'm like, do you know the story behind what you're cooking? And they always don't know. So uh, one of the Matt's signature dishes is Korean fried cauliflower. And I told them, it's, I was asked them, do you know why it's so genius? Because Korean fried cauliflower means KFC, which is Korean fried chicken. And it tastes like chicken. And they coat it with a Korean chili sauce. And then, but it's a vegetarian dish. And he made his signature dish the cheapest food cost dish possible. Yes. And, and, and those things are all genius, but I know a guy who was cooking and didn't know the story. And I was like, then you don't know what you're doing because how hard is it to cook cauliflower? How hard is it? You're just putting in batter and frying it. But it is the concept that is the most important. So I think young chefs need to know the story when they're working to ask questions, but not ask questions just on the recipe, but what is he trying to do? What story is he trying to sell? How is he communicating? And I think these all these things are important. And so work at work at smaller restaurants, work at work with people who have vision mm -hmm. and copy them until you have your own. I think that's what it is. That's, okay. anyway, imitate the best. Yeah. Um but uh, I I ate there for our wedding anniversary. It was really good. But I think how were you able to get the young chef? Because the vibe of the young people you recruited there was really good. Mm. So how were you able to create that, like teamwork? I, 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 I know, used I to talk about, you know, one is like you have to believe in what you believe. So when we first hire, of course, there's going to be people like, yeah. oh, you know, things are always done this way in Hong Kong. I'm like, well, if you don't like it, you have to go. Because you don't buy into my concept. And I think the other thing is like, young people, want things are very different from older people, right? Maybe if you're older, you want health insurance. Mm -hmm. Young kids want a title, an experience, and they want to learn from someone who's also young that they can relate to. And young people want to hang out with young people. So when eight of your staff is young, they're going to be like, may I have a friend that wants to work here. He's also going to be young. He's not going to bring me a 60-year-old guy that just wants... So, so they attract each other. So I think what's really important is that you need to make sure your core is genuine, nice, positive, have uh, positive intentions, 
um, when they're cooking and they don't uh, influence bad things. Like if one person is very negative, if you only have three people, that negative person will affect the other two. So it's my job to remove the negative person and find someone positive. But once you have a very core group of very positive, young and aspirational people, uh -huh. then you will attract more. And nowadays, because um, we work very closely with uh, Vans, Nike, um, we work with, um, 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 we travel a lot. So every time I travel, even very early on, I took it out of my expense. Like they might say, May, you can bring one chef. I always bring two because I want them to see what I saw when I was at Motivation, when I traveled, so that they see it's like, whoa, like what is this? You know, they didn't know that chefs could be here. And I think that's very important to know what the what level you can be here. I think I think a lot of times when, when chefs they're young, you ask them, do you know Asia's fifty best? Do you know Michelin star? Do you know anything? They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. So it's it is important to give them the drive to want something. And, and including competition, I think. That's nice. So, yeah. Did you run business strategy in university? Like I did um, hotel management. Mm -hmm. I think I was also naturally interested in business. So when I look at um, <laughs> restaurant, I think um, Matt was a really good friend. He always, every once in a while he comes by, he's like, do things for Little Bao, don't do things for Mei Chow. It's not about you. The restaurant is not about you. And that's the difference between if you want an artist, uh, like my restaurant is very commercially successful to a mass market. Mm -hmm. And it's because every decision we made was based on what was best for Little Bao. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and the more we were doing it, the more, of course we inspire our own style. Mm -hmm. and, but I don't do things for my ego. Mm -hmm. You know, I always do the best for the team and the best for everyone. So you don't consider this as a chef-driven restaurant? I think that, you know, what's really interesting was that in Hong Kong, it's really hard to open um, a restaurant, period. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? If you look at people that are like Gagan or, or these world's 50 best, mm -hmm. even Alvin, he spent seven years mm -hmm. not making anything. Mm -hmm. And at 30 years old with no money, mm -hmm. that is not your first option. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very interesting mm -hmm. to win this award now because I'm only 32 and I've only opened a restaurant for three years. So I think that Little Bao was a, 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 not a chef-driven restaurant. It was about branding, business, doing really good quality food with a specific story, specific music, specific lifestyle, all integrated into a brand. And that was what Little Bao was about. But I think what progressed later is that because of Little Bao's success and then also I opened Second Draft, and now I'm opening Happy Paradise. Happy Paradise could only be open today and not three years ago because Happy Paradise, the new restaurant that I'm opening, is very progressive. We're doing a new style of Cantonese food. Technically, it's very high. We're using a lot of chefs and everyone needs to, you know, it's paid better and everything. And so I couldn't have done that three years ago. So I think, you know, it's a progress. So I think uh, as a chef, you'll see how varied I can be maybe in 10 years time. I think it's a little bit <laughs> early to say how chef driven or how award winning I am. Like, you know, I, I think I have a long way to go. Yeah. So how do you get your uh, new, uh, I mean, trendy lifestyle? How did you get the heat? I think, you know, with the same with the um, uh, PowerPoint, I, I was very rebellious when I was young. I think I have ADD. I was always very, I was interested in extracurricular activities and never in school. So, so to me, like learning was not very, I wasn't really interested in learning in a, a, a traditional context. But like, for example, I read a lot. I read um, anything from politics to science to hip hop music, hip hop culture to, to things like that. And then I live it. So, you know, every five years of my life, I was a raver, you know. I, I, I sang karaoke with my yeah. friends in Hong Kong. Um, I used to go to a lot of music festivals. I used to okay. follow DJs. I used to um, yeah. go to these parties where all the gay guys would dress up. And it was um, very progressive and very modern. And, and I love arts. And, and so when all those things come together, I wanted it to be part of everything that I do. So I'm not just a chef that's interested in the kitchen. Mm. I'm interested in everything about the restaurant, including 
what's invisible in the restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, like, why are these kids interested? Mm -hmm. You know, how many things, am I just doing like, hey, here's a good salad, do it. Mm -hmm. How am I inspiring them? And I think it's like all these different things that make them feel like, you know, this is a very interesting, awesome, like, experience. Mm -hmm. And that comes from my life experience, wanting to experience all those things when I was very young. And, and I was always a traveler and curious. But do you think this millennial fun dining will take over the fine dining scene? I think, you know, um, <clears throat> things will change. Everything's interrelated, including politics, uh, basic salaries, and things like that. If you look at fine dining back in five, ten years ago, if you go to Paris, everything's like, there's 50 dots on every dish. <laughs> And nowadays, it's very realistic. You go to like set team or all these restaurants now, they open four days a week. They don't even work open on weekends. They only open weekdays. They're like, weekends are too annoying for me. I like weekdays. Weekends, I want to be with my kids. And then because the salary is so high, they simplified the presentation. They're like, we only have four components, right? And because of that, people are more creative when you're in a certain context. I think what happened to fine dining was that a chef could get anything, like in Hong Kong, like a French chef can get any French ingredient. Mm. So you ask some French chefs, they've never been to a wet market because they never had to, yeah. you know? So I think when you're spoiled, you become um, just doing the same thing all the time. I think the new wave is that they like to challenge themselves and they want to do a new style. They want music, they want loud music, they want a different interior. They, they want to go hang out and have drinks. They don't want like this kind of service where um, in the traditional sense, it's like I'm more important than you and you should be serving me and this wine and, and it's very so, and I think and, and there's always going to be a part that's like amazing about that and then there's going to be the younger chefs that want to um, do something else and and of course because of the trend I think from David Chang to all these people that showed up to have all these different styles for restaurants that made it cool 